Hello, it's Carolyn from the Purple Poncho. Today I'm going to show you how to make interlock crochet, which makes these little squares that are all connected to each other. And we're going to be making it in the round. So let's get started. Today I'm using a size J or 6mm Tunisian crochet hook. And I'm also using a number 4 worsted weight yarn. You can also use a regular crochet hook, but this one is shiny and I think it's distracting in the video. So you can use a regular crochet hook as well. So I'm using my Tunisian crochet hook, but it's not required because you're not going to have that many stitches on your hook at one time. So for this pattern, I uh, made a little purse there. It's a multiple of 9 plus 1. So each square requires nine stitches. And each row has six squares in it. So that would be 54 stitches. And then you're going to add one to your count. So whatever size bag you're going to be making, you would do it in uh, nine times the number of squares that you want, plus one. I have 54 stitches plus one, so I have 55 chains. So to begin, I start by rotating my work to the back and going through the back bump of the chain go into that first back bump there that you can see okay not the one that your loop is coming out of okay we're gonna skip that first chain and going into the second chain insert your hook there I'm gonna tighten down that first loop a little bit it's on my hook yarn over and pull up a loop so now is a good time to adjust your tension on that first loop. Okay, and we're going to pick up five loops. And we're going to have a total of six. So there's two, three, four, five, and six. So six loops on our hook. Do the uh, return pass. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. And that's row one. Row two, insert into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And in each loop across, well, each vertical bar across, we're going to be picking up a loop. Four and five. Now working into our chain, go into the next available chain, go into that back back loop, back bump, and yarn over, pull up a loop. So this chain is going to eventually be going along the edge of this row as we build it up. Okay, so I have five stitches for my square plus the the one from the chain on the end. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. And that's row two. Row three is the same. We're going to repeat this for four rows. This is row three. Go into the next chain in the back bump there. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So we have six loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. That's row three. And we want to make one more row. Tunisian simple stitch. If you're not familiar with this stitch, I will leave a link above for my Tunisian simple stitch video. So there's five loops on my hook. Go into the next chain, back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop. Six loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. And now to bind off row four and close it up. This is the bind off stitch. 
insert your hook, yarn over just like before, and then slip stitch. Go into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. And repeat that across. And I'm keeping them a little bit loose. I'm not doing it too tight because we're going to be actually working into those stitches later on. Okay, so here's my last one of the row. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch on the side, the next chain, back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, and slip stitch that closed. So here's my first block. It's a little lopsided, but that's okay. And we're going to continue on making blocks all the way down the chain. So for the second block, we have one loop on our hook. That counts as our first stitch. So we're going to pick up the next five loops going into the back bump of the chains. There's one, two, three, four, five. So we should have six loops on our hook. Okay. Return, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. And we're going to repeat this for four rows. This is row two. To measure and simple stitch in each vertical bar across. That's five, makes up the square. Bringing it into the edge, the next available chain in the back bump. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we have six loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. In row three. I'm going to start going a little bit faster. You can slow down the video if you want, want to see it in a little bit slower motion. We're going to be repeating this over and over and over. There's three rows. This is row four into the next back bump of the next chain. Six loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. Bind off. Tunisian simple stitch, bind off. Slip stitch. Each stitch off one at a time. It closes up the row before and finishes the row. Then don't forget, going into that next chain, we're going to do one more slip stitch to finish the square. Okay, so now I have two. So repeat this same sequence until you have six blocks. Okay, coming to my last block, starting with six loops on my hook and then making sure that I have four stitches left on the edge. These are the stitches that are going to go up. If you find that you have too many stitches or not enough stitches, you can always add some on with your tail. Okay. Now if you didn't have a chain left or if you needed more than more chains than you have left, you can just use your tail and add more chains if you needed it. Okay. So instead of taking out all this work, that would be painful. <laughs> just go ahead and add some more chains. It won't really matter. So for my last row, I'm just going to do the bind off, Tunisian simple stitch, and then slip stitch all the way across. And then grabbing that last stitch. And doing a bind off on that one as well. 
or actually just slip stitching to it. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Okay, we have six blocks. Now to make it in the round, okay, I have the wrong side facing up now. I'm going to go ahead and bring the two ends together. want my working yarn up above, like so. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch to this point here on the first block that we made. I think I can get my hook in there. Yep. It's a little tight right there on the end even though I think I'm working loosely on those, I sometimes I don't. Okay, so I'm just doing a slip stitch to that corner there. So let me show you. Okay, so now for row two, we want to be starting up here at this top corner. So we're going to slip stitch up to this top corner. And that's because I'm using gray again. I mentioned before that I used two rows of each color. If you were going to change colors, then you would just end off this row, cut it, cut your yarn, and then just add your new color starting at any point in the work. We're going to be working, picking up our stitches along this edge and connecting them to this edge. So imagine this side is our chain that we're going to be doing our return pass from over here like that. So we need to get up there to that top of that point. So I'm going to slip stitch. So I'm in that very, very corner stitch right there. I'm just going to go in the next stitch. And again, you want to do this a little bit loose because we're going to be working in these into these stitches again later on. So I'm just yarning over and pulling through. And we want to be at the very top st stitch of our diamond shaped or our square. Okay, so now we're ready to start picking up stitches. Working across this way. So this counts as our first stitch. And looking at our vertical bars, you want to go into the slip stitch that we did before. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So these are going to continue on. So there's two three, four, and five. Okay, so those are our five stitches for the next block. And now we want to connect to the second block. And we're going to go into this space here. But if you, you see there's kind of a hole there. So if you want to go into that space there, well, there's not a space, the space is here. If you want to go into that stitch, right in between the two legs, okay, and yarn over and pull up a loop, you can do it right there instead. And then that won't have a big hole there. So now I have six loops. Wait, two, four, yeah. Yarn over and pull through two. I kind of like to pull that down a little bit. I don't want it to be really loose right there, that first one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. Okay, so 
still looks kind of weird, right? So the next row, row two, Tunisian simple stitch. As usual. So now we have five. And then I'm going to go into that space. Next space, yarn over. Through two. Pull that down a little bit. And then yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. Okay. And repeat for two more rows. Same thing. Go in the next stitch. Go in the next space, excuse me. And again, you can be going into these stitches every time if you like. I'm just, I just do it at the first one. It's up to you. I've seen it both ways, so however you're most comfortable or whatever works for you in your style of crochet. If you're a loose crocheter or a tight crocheter, it would, you know, that depends on where you want to put that connection there. Okay, and this is row four. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. Now we're going to bind off. Same as before, Tunisian simple stitch and then slip stitch. Go on the next stitch and slip stitch. We're closing up that stitch on the row below. Okay, and now we want to go to the next stitch at the top of the next diamond or square, yarn over, pull up a loop, and slip stitch that. So that's the second uh, diamond or square right here. You see the holes there. Not too bad. Again, you can go into these spaces or stitches here instead, right here. You can pick them up. Actually, I think I did that one here. Yeah, I did go in there. But after that, you can go right through here if you prefer that instead you would go here here and here and then again your last stitch would be in the same spot at the top okay let me show you one more time going into our for our next block go into the next stitch pull up a loop Going under that next V, all the way across till you have five loops on your hook. And then going across to the next block, I'm going to go in between those, that V there, that first stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Now I have my six loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Tighten that down a little bit. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. And for row two, Tunisian simple stitch all the way across. And five, five loops on my hook. I'm gonna go in that stitch this time all the way across here just so I can see the difference. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Normal closing, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. And row three. Five loops going into that next block, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Six loops, yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. One more row. Let's see, one, two, three. Yep, row four. Going up into that stitch. That one's kind of hard to get into. 
Okay, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. And now for the bind off, Tunisian simple stitch and slip stitch. And then going into the very top underneath that V of the square or the diamond, and over, pull through, and slip stitch. So now we have two blocks. Ooh, I actually like that better. It is definitely a lot tighter on the side there than this one. See that? So either way is fine. That's actually my first time doing that. I do like it. But on this purse here, I didn't do that. I just went into the normal space. And if you line your bag, then that's fine too. It doesn't, so it's up to you. If you want to go in the space or you want to go in the stitch. All right. So you just continue this all the way around in picking up the stitches, attaching to the next block, picking up the stitches, connecting to the next block all the way around until you get back over here. I'll show you how to pick up the stitches when you're working with these uh, slip stitches that we did when we had to slip stitch up to start our, our row. So I'll meet you back over here. On my last block here, I have five, picked up five stitches, and you're just going to go underneath that slip stitch and the stitch behind here that you normally would go under. So just include that slip stitch when you're picking up that last stitch um, on the edge of your last block. So six stitches on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, as normal, all the way across. That's row one, here's row two. And then going into that next space, just going underneath all of that. Just ignore that you have a slip stitch there. And then when you do that first return, it is a little bit fatter, but you won't be able to tell once your project is done. So I like to just go ahead and cover up with that whole thing to make it look the same all the way around. So there's five stitches. Go on the next uh, space, yarn over, pull up a loop. And yarn over, pull through two, and return all the way across as normal. There's three rows, here's four. Now going in that last space, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. Tighten that down a little bit and return as normal. And then bind off and slip stitch. Tunisian slip stitch all the way across. And then in that top stitch. Go ahead and insert your hook and pull up a loop and slip stitch there. Okay, so once you're done with the row, can't really tell. The stitches are a tiny bit bigger, but not much. No one's going to be able to see it or notice. Okay, so go ahead and end off your yarn. And you're ready to start a new color. We 
have two rows of gray and now I'm bringing in this very pretty mauve color. So make a slip knot. And you can start in any point that you like. I'll start right here. So I'm going to insert my hook in the very top of the diamond underneath the, the V. I'm going to put the, the slip knot on my hook and I'm going to pull it through. And that's going to be my first loop on my hook. And then I'm just going to continue like I was before. Exactly the same thing. Go in the next, under the next V, yarn over, pull up a loop. These were the bind off stitches that we did on this other row here. Going under those bind off stitches. Four and five loops on my hook. Then coming over to my next block. I'm going to go into that uh, stitch here in the middle of that V. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Six loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way across. Okay. And I'm going to just keep making the same exact stitch sequence going to be making four rows and a bind off row for each block. Tighten that down a little bit. I'm trying to keep these stitches going up along the side here about the same size. And then yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. I'm going to speed up here. Make space, yarn over, pull up, return. These actually work up pretty quickly once you get going and you know where you're putting your hook. The hardest part for me was deciding what colors to make. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay, so here's four rows and now I'm going to do the bind off. And slip stitch, Tunisian, slip stitch, Tunisian, slip stitch. Make sure you get that very last bar there and then slip stitch to the next V, the point there. And now we're ready to work over here on the next block. I will show you this side just picking up because we have that knot there. There's going to pick up five stitches. There's three, four, and I'm going in this normal spot just going underneath that bind off stitch from before. Same thing here. Okay. Just ignore that we have a little knot there. So I have five loops. Now coming over here to this next side, I, you can go into that space right here, but I'm going to go up a one into that stitch just so we don't have that big gap and yarn over, pull through and then pull it down a little bit or pull it tight a little bit there on this V here and then just yarn over, pull through two all the way across this stitch here looks a little loose. I'm going to take it out. So to take it out I'm putting my hook back in to my row of picking up loops and then I'm going to take out the return pass. Okay, So now I don't have to pick them all up again. And I'm going to tighten down that last stitch there. Maybe not quite that much. There we go. Okay. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. Okay, that looks better. And now pick up the next row. We 
going up to the next space on the next block and return. So depending on what size bag you would like to make, again it's a multiple of nine. We have five stitches going across and four rows going up. So we need nine stitches or nine chains for each block. So you can increase your starting blocks easily. You can also make your squares or your blocks different sizes and you can have different amount of rows, you can have them wider, you could have six or seven stitches across, you know, five or six stitches going up or rows going up. So whatever pattern you're following, that's great. Just make sure you're using the stitch counts that the pattern you're following is requiring. Okay. So that was a bind off and then slip stitch to the top of the next square or a diamond. So they're squares, but then when you look at your work, it it makes diamonds. Okay. Aren't they pretty? So pretty. It makes a very nice chevron design. I love this. Okay. So continue on for two rows in the same color, uh, exactly the same way. Go all the way around, working up, and then slip stitch up the side to the very top uh, of your of your row, and then work down in here and, and put the second row here. Okay, I'll see you back. I finished my last block and my bind off and I'm going to do my very last bind off stitch into that top of that block here. Okay, so that's my last bind off stitch for this block here. Now to start my next row, depending on if you're going to continue with the same color, then we slip stitch up to the top here, all the way over to here. Or if you're going to use a brand new color, you would end off at this point and then start at any point on your project and work down and across. So I'm, I'm doing two rows of each color. So I'm going to loosely just slip stitch up the side here to get to the top. And here's the very top. And we're going to slip stitch in there. Okay, see they're kind of big because we're going to be working around them on the next, uh, once we go around the entire project and we're doing our last block that would be right here, we'll work around those stitches. Okay, and continue on picking up stitches and connecting them to this next block. Go all the way around and I'll see you back. Okay, coming around to my very last block of this round in this color. So I've picked up my five stitches and now I'm just going to go into that space for, for six loops on my hook, that space going up this next block here, and then return pass as normal. Tunisian simple stitch across. Same as before, I'm just showing you one more time because going over here where we slip stitched up the side, just go into that space. It's quite thick here, but just go ahead and yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through two all the way across and keep working all the way up and slip stitch to the very top to end off your row. To finish off my round here, I have my slip stitches going across my stitches and going into that very top stitch, going through all of that, yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch to end off the row. 
and yarn over and pull through, ending off your yarn. So that's two rows of this really pretty burgundy color. I think it's actually called purple, but it doesn't really look purple to me. Okay, and then for your little, your final color, the slip knot, go ahead and pick a spot going into that top stitch, insert your hook. I put a slip knot on my hook, and that's just my preference. Then yarn it over, pulling it through, and that's going to be my first loop on my hook for this row. And continue on. Um, I hope you guys are getting this now. Same exact thing, just a new color. Picking up five loops, going over here. Again, you can go in the space if you like. Um, on this first stitch, I'm going into that stitch there so I don't have the gap at the bottom. And yarn over, pull through two. So go ahead and make two rows of your third color, which right mine is this dark gray color. But do not end off after you've done two rows, and I'll show you how to end it off. We're going to actually do a couple more blocks in this final color and I'll show you I'll show you what I mean. I've just completed my second round of the dark gray color and now instead of ending off here because this is the the size of the purse that I want to make to to make the bottom part we're going to slip stitch up to the top of the next block and we're going to complete two more blocks like we've done and then we're going to end off at that point after two more blocks. So I'm going to make another block here and another block here and then I will end off my yarn. So here are my two blocks that I've just completed I'm just going to end off my yarn and leaving a long tail. And you're probably wondering why do we have these extra two blocks? To finish the bag, lay it out flat, lining up the edges like so. Then we're going to fold these up and we're going to use our long tail and a yarn needle. And we're just going to sew it up and whip stitch all of this together all along the edge of the bottom. And that's going to make a very nice edge here along this bottom. Okay. Thread your yarn tail on your yarn needle. And I'm just going to begin going down this edge and I am on the right side of my work and I'm just gonna do a whip stitch going underneath the V's of each stitch just lining them up and going underneath each one doing a whip stitch Okay like so. Next I'm going to run my yarn back up up through this seam I just sewed okay just to get my yarn back over here I'll fold over the first square and do the same thing, just going underneath the V on one side and picking up the V on the other side and whip stitch it together. Just continue this all the way down. up 
a stitch in each one. And then continue matching up all the way around, all the way around, and then sewing up the edge. Just whip stitching all the way around, picking up the stitches from your bag to the last final row that we just did, and then finishing over here. Okay, finishing up my stitching here of the bottom. When you get to the ends, this side or this side, either one, has like this little bit that sticks out. So I just take my yarn and kind of stitch that down just so it doesn't stick up there on the very end. And you can do that a couple of times to make sure it's flattened down how you like it. Okay. So here is the bottom of the bag all sewn up. You can see a little bit of the stitching, but overall, I think it blends in really nice. And of course, this side doesn't have any stitching, so it looks completely uniform to the rest of your bag. And I will also show you another way you can soap your bag if you don't like this way. Okay. So another way to sew up your bag, I, okay, I'm going to show you how to do the top up here and finish off these open areas here to make it straight across. Let me show you on this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these little half triangles now, okay? And you can also do this on the bottom of your bag, is finish off the entire row just like this with half triangles and then just whip stitch up that section there. So you could have the bottom of your bag look like that. Okay? If you don't want to do the uh, two squares like I showed you. So that's another option you can do. Okay, but to, to do the triangles along the top, to make the little diamonds across the top, insert your hook in the top of one of the diamonds, or the squares, Place your yarn on your hook and pull through. Go ahead and pick up a loop in each stitch across. You should have five loops. Three, four, and five. Come across to your other side, other block, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until you have three loops left on your hook, then yarn over, pull through all three loops. So we've made the last two loops of your row, we've turned it into one, we've decreased right there. So skip those two, go into the next stitch, and pick up a loop, and pick up a loop in the next two stitches. So now we have four loops. Come over to the other side, insert your hook, run over, pick up a loop, and do the same thing. Return until you have three loops on your hook, and yarn over, pull through all three loops, skip the first stitch, go into the next stitch, pick up a loop, and the next stitch, pick up a loop, come over to the next available space, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, now we already have three loops left on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. So skipping the first stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, Go into the next stitch on the side, pull up a loop, and we already have just three. So yarn over and pull through all three. To 
close your row, going to the top of your block, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. And that closes off the top of your square, and you've made a little triangle in the middle. We're going to repeat that all the way around. So this counts as our first stitch on our hook. Pick up the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. And now we have five loops on our hook. Come across to the next block, pick up a loop, and turn as normal until you have three loops on your hook and yarn over, pull through all three. Skipping that first stitch, go into the next stitch and pick up a loop. And then pick up a loop across in each stitch. Four loops on your hook, go in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, return until you have three loops on your hook yarn over, pull through all three. Skipping over, pick up the next two stitches, go into the next stitch, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through three. Go in the next stitch, go on the side, yarn over, and then yarn over, pull through all three, and slip stitch in that top stitch. Isn't that neat? Okay, so I'm going to repeat that all the way around to finish off the top of the bag and make it even all the way around. Closing up the last triangle here, go into that first stitch at the very top where we started this round and do a slip stitch. Now to complete the top of the bag what I did is chain one and work a single crochet in each stitch across the top of the bag all the way around. So just continue all the way around, join to the beginning stitch. But now I'd like to show you the inside of the bag, because I haven't shown you the back of the stitches at all. So here's what the wrong side looks like. And when you turn your bag inside out, then you can go ahead and weave in your ends. Make sure they're really secure and nice and tight and woven in. Or if you're going to line your bag, then perhaps you're not going to be weaving these in. You would just make your your lining and attach it and no one will see your your ends. So that's up to you. So that's how to make entrelock in the round. It's a Tunisian stitch. Again, you can use any hook this is the hook I actually used to make my first bag, but it's so shiny that with the light, I think it's it's harder to see, so I was using my little Tunisian hook. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a lot and some tricks along the way. And I will also do a tutorial on the handle for the bag. I'll also be doing a tutorial on how to make this really pretty rope handle and I'm going to be sewing this inside my bag here and I will show you how to do that on the video for the rope handle. Okay, it's So pretty. I use this rope handle on all my, all my bags that I make.
for me to use personally. I really love this this pattern and I love the squishiness of it. I love the design in it that it makes and it's comfortable to wear. So be I'll be linking that video to this video as well so you can finish your bag. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to make entrelock in the round. Join me again real soon for some more videos coming out. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today. Have a great day.